You designed this, bro? Hello guys, welcome to the Beauty in the Business show. We have a great show today. Our show topic is Insight to Male Grooming. We are talking to professional barbers who are here to give up some great tips and their insight to male grooming. First, we're gonna introduce you all to the people. Our first guest, tell us your name. I'm hey. Shan Q Sharp. How long have you been in business? Um, I've been in business since, I've been cutting hair since 2000. Okay. Yep. Barbershop owner for about, let me see here, approximately eight years. Okay. Yep. What drives your passion for this industry? Good question. What drives my passion? Um, mm. Come back to me on that one. I froze up. <laughs> okay, next guest. Hey guys, um, my name is Breezy. I have been barbering on and off for two years, but in the presence of Shannon for the past nine months, which is such a blessing to be learning from like really great people in the industry. Um, is that the same question that drives my passion? Not what yet. does it? Okay. What drives does? My passion is just trying to be happy. Okay. And, um, Happiness is number one. I was in the industry of, like I was in the corporate industry and I wasn't happy. So I decided to leave and I'm definitely in my place where I should be. Okay. What is it like being a female barber? <laughs> being a female barber definitely has its challenges. Okay. But again, I'm in a great place to receive blessings because Shannon has been a great blessing to me, giving me the opportunity to grow and to blossom point is every day, encouraging every day. Um, so my challenges as a female barber hasn't been as bumpy as okay. I as you would think. Okay. Due to, to the support of Tavon and Shane and Marquise. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marquise, welcome. Well thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Um I'm Marquise, of course. Um, now, go through those questions again. Cause I'm so, how long have you been in business and what drives your passion for this industry? How long I've been in business? Well, I've been cutting for, whew, for a minute. Professionally, I'll say eight years. Um, what drives my passion? I just love, I love taking care of people. Okay. I just love making people feel good. That's just to see a face um, light up and when I get that, that look, when that person look in the mirror and they sure. see that part of that line, they nod their head, that right there is just like, I got you. I know you like it. I know you feel good. So I like to see people walk out just feeling good. They walk different. I love that. Good. Awesome. So. Awesome. So what are the requirements to become a barber here like in the state of Maryland? How did you all become a barber? Well, you have two options. Okay. Uh, you can go to cosmetology school or barbering school. There's several in the state or in your local city. Or you can do an apprenticeship. Um, that's the route I went. I, I found that doing an apprenticeship to me was better than school. Um, not that I have anything against school because I have my license in cosmetology mm -hmm. and barbering. One in Jersey and here. So okay. I went to cosmetology school in Jersey and I did an apprenticeship here in Maryland so the apprenticeship program is great uh, you just you know sit under a master barber get your hours pass your test good so that's how you all obtain your license as well going through one of them options yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in the midst of my apprenticeship um, so I'm working and so I want to obtain it good and I went through apprentice Thanks to uh, Mr. McCoy for giving me a shot. I um, went to a couple of barber shops, and they said, "No, we don't take them. We don't take. We don't do apprentice." That we don't. But Mr. McCoy gave me a shot, so thank God for him, Mr. McCoy, on Emerson and Allendale. Um, actually, the apprentice program really is the way to go. I mean, the schools, the schools are not sending a lot of barbers out. In the in the in the field, ready. Okay. They 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 had their book smart. Okay. But 
they are not their skills are not sharpened unless un, the the ones who are just starting from scratch mm-hmm. in school mm-hmm. now if they if they already been cutting and they and they go to school then that's pretty good yeah you know but when they just say oh, you know what just wake up one day and say you know i want to be a barber and just go to school and they send them out they're not doing too good because they're more interested in getting the money okay uh, can i ask a question there do you think um because i had this debate as far as with cutting and i think going to cosmetology school i think what we do is a gift mm-hmm. it is just something that you have you know what i'm saying yes mm-hmm. um going to school that just prepares you for the state board that's all it does yes. right either you got it or you don't right and i think when people go in they're thinking they're going in to get the gift the gift okay and you just don't right. have it right that you know you can learn but it's just it's a gift man it's that's true. it's it's a gift i can't it's hard to explain it mm-hmm. it's just a gift but i went to school the school did help because i did learn some things as far as you know, far as with bacteria, diseases, yeah. right. that part, the clinical part, I would say, because I'm in the medical field too, that part is helpful. Mm-hmm. But just if you're going to learn to cut, you got to either have it or you Yeah, you I was speaking on the yeah. cut part. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't teach. I mean, it's hard to, you you know, you can, somebody can fade, but if you just don't have that stroke, you just, I've seen people just think they got it and it's easy and it, they, yeah. they, they say, no, nah, I'm not doing it. So they get their license and then they get in the shop and they just fall apart. And give up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got to be patient with this too. Oh, man. It's a yes. grind. Especially with black people. They just don't <laughs> hop in people's chair. Yeah, nah. They got to they gotta watch. Scan you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, you going to come up hard in this town. Uh-huh. In yeah. this town, you're going to come up hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Going to make you or break you. Yeah. It will. Watch for a long time. Um, and they would say, no, I don't want her. I want him. And yeah. they would say it right in my face. And yeah. I just had to get used to it and just develop a tougher skin and understand that men are more particular and who cuts their hair. Yeah. Um, but I have a lot of male clients now, which they trust Good. me. Um, even Shannon is out sometimes. Some of his clients will come to me. Okay. Um, some will come to Marquis. So it's definitely a cohesive balance within the shop of trust. And that's where the clients walking in as well as the barbers. Good. Yeah, I, I have to say, yeah, it's my hardest experience. One of the things I've learned when I first came into the to the barber game, and I can cut at home. Mm-hmm. You know, that was you think you you nice at home. Mm-hmm. Everybody nice. You got all the the neighborhood jumping. <laughs> but when you get in the shop, and it's like it's that's like the NFL. That's like the, you know that's it's on a whole different level. That's your stage. Yeah, yeah. and and I remember sitting. I went to a Spanish shop, only black dude in a Puerto Rican shop, and I sat, and the poppies would come in there, and they would be, they, I know all they would say, Moreno, that's all I knew, and I was like, okay, what are you saying, you calling me, you know, something yeah. else, <laughs> but I sat, and they would want to know, can I cut with the, sh- the shears yes. and all that stuff, and you got to be patient, and just, and when you have your time to shine, you got to jump on it. Mm. And kill it. That's You'll get your shot. That's it. <laughs> Don't mess up. Don't mess up. <laughs> so I want you all to break it down for us who's listening. Some of the terminology used in the barbershop. So when a client do come sit in your chair, they know exactly what they're asking for. <laughs> yeah. So what we what is tapered? What's happening when you're tapering the client? What's uh, a taper depends on you. Um, a taper is it a temple taper? Or is it? Uh, what What are you when you say a taper? That's the one of the things that we have to deal with clients because okay. terminology, terminology and what they think they know mm-hmm. is not what they know what they calling it. Okay. So a taper, in my opinion, if I'm tapering, I'm tapering the, the, the size, mm-hmm. the temple, the back. Right now, okay. if you want your taper high, mm-hmm. low, shadow, skin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just different. You got to be able to explain that. And I think the terminology is also different from where you come from. So yeah, that's, that's very Jersey, true. Maryland, PA, Brooklyn. We're going to say different things. Yeah. So it's definitely um, necessary for us to identify what they want. So we have a lot of conversation in the beginning. So do okay. you mean the size? Do you want it like this? Um, mm-hmm. We don't necessarily have the tradition where you have the picture in the barbershop. 
because everything okay. is social media. So mm -hmm. you go to Instagram, and a lot of times you see Instagram people <laughs> like, I want this. But do you headline this back here? Right. Like, yeah. yeah, that. <laughs> yo. So, when you be miracle right, workers, right. and you're like, yo. Like, we had to reevaluate that situation. Okay. Um, and it happens often. But you, you talk them down and you honest with them. I've heard Shannon be honest with people like 100. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, you want this, but you had this. Yeah. So I, I just said, oh, then I just giggle a little bit because people really expect the impossible. Okay. So what's the difference between the temper and the fade? So a fade is all the way around. Fade, okay. You have hair up top and you just fade it to blend the whole hair. Okay. Like all the whole haircut. Right. Mm. Okay. So, Mama, with the with, with your with your son, when you come in the barbershop, <laughs> and you talking about, well, I just want to have a little fade around the side. And you was talking about a temple table, and we take it all the way around. So that's not what I was talking about. Yeah. You messed up my boy head. Yep. Yep. So it's definitely a difference between mm. table and fade. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Good. Most they definitely. They can't cut up there. They messed my boy. Uh -huh. head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad we covering this. <laughs> or they'll show you the picture. Uh -huh. They'll show you a picture say, I want this, and I think this is a taper. And it's like, nah, that's a, that's a skin exactly. fade. Yeah. No, nah, that's a tape. That's what my... All right, well, nah, you want I mean, with the picture. Yeah. Do they come in and say, I want a little boosty? Yeah. 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 So what is that? What is that? Boosty fade. Is I want a boosty fade. A hot top fade. That's a basically a hot top fade. Okay. It's just pop because boosty. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or a Nas fade. A Nas fade. Yeah. 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 A Caesar. Yes. Right. So do the hair have to be a certain length up here for the booty fade or something? I or mean, it's a it's supposed to be a high top. Okay. So yeah. hopefully you have enough to <laughs> to get the little get the box shape like you got yeah. to get, at least get the box shape. It'll just be a boot. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get booed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about high and tight? Is I, that the same thing? No, that's no? military. I was military. Okay. So, mm -hmm. a Describe high and tight. That. Now, it depends on because a high and tight with us, you gotta have a blend in there. Now, okay. with, a, with others, they just want that joint just high and skin, skin and no blend, no, no blend. nothing. Okay. So, that's more of a military cut. Uh, when they say that, but for us, I have guys that want a high fade. We'll say a high fade, but when mm -hmm. you say a high and tight, mm -hmm. that joint's up here. Okay. It's so they gotta skin. say the word fade so it can for blend. Me. Yeah. Okay. For yeah, me. I had um, when I was at McCoy's, I had a uh, couple guys. You know, he has an older clientele come in, and they were in the military, and I couldn't grasp the concept of no blend. Yeah, but they wanted to know, and I, I was actually messing them up because I was blending it. Even if I could just get that smidget of a blend, mm -hmm. you know, like a hair nail of blend. Yeah, but they didn't want, and I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. And really, it's just a bowl. That's it. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But I couldn't grasp the, but I could. Right, and I couldn't grasp the concept of it until I watched Mr. McCoy do it. And other guys do it, and I said, oh, "Okay, it's really just a bowl." Mm -hmm. But that's that's a that's a mess up to everybody else. But, but you have to be in regulation. Okay. And that's the thing with military, it, the haircut has to be in regulation. Mm -hmm. So, for most brothers, we want you know, you you gotta have to have it faded, but it has to still be in a, in a military regulation. So we can't be ran no cruddy in the military. You know what right. I'm saying? You okay. can get behind, but that's that's out of regulation. So that's something that, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about undercut? What does that mean? Yeah, breezy. Undercut is just when you um, have a lot of hair. Okay. You just are shaving off the back, just the back side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people get designs with the back being shaved. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's trending now. We see. That is definitely mm -hmm. trending. When you have like the ponytail up top and the back have the yeah. different kind of designs. Or, uh, and you have okay. The, the undercut, mm -hmm. like it's real high, all that. Mm -hmm. okay. You said McCoy. I'm sorry. You said McCoy. Yeah, when I was there. Yeah, that's where I started. That's where I'm Yeah, a little mom and pop barbershop. But it's a good. It was a great spot to start because it's in the trenches. This is it's tough. It's rough. You get my shit right now. 
that's some of the stuff you had to deal with. Yes, so you had to be sure. Yes, uh-huh. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next term is faux hawk. What is that? What is a faux hawk? A faux hawk, um, again, is based upon where you're at now. I cut all textures of hair. Okay. So if I cut, I don't know if you've seen like um, the European soccer players uh, that have the almost like a mohawk, but right in here it comes swished in and you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a peak sort of, and then just to give it that texture. That's when they would say a faux hawk. It yeah. looks almost like a mohawk, but so I would texturize it with the shears and all that stuff. So it's just different. I don't know. I never had to give a. I never had somebody black say give me a faux hawk. I, they say a mohawk. Right. Okay. But a or faux a burst hawk. Fade. Just, yeah, a burst fade. Or, mm-hmm. or the a South of France. A burst fade? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's the first time I'm hearing a burst fade. But the correct terminology, yeah. not not yeah. from faux hawk, but the correct terminology for uh, the burst fade or the mohawk was is uh, the South of France. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Curtis, okay. uh, what's my man? Uh, Curtis. Curtis Smith. Yeah. He. He made that popular. Right. He was walking the streets. Right. I'm yeah. going to Google all of this. He yeah. was walking the streets in some South part of uh, your Yeah, South of France. South of France. Yeah. South of France. With, Usher, yeah. with Usher. And mm-hmm. some, they had it. And so he put it on mm-hmm. Usher. And then when everybody seen Usher with it, you know, they thought it was a... They thought it was a mohawk, of course, but the t- correct terminology was South of France. And the thing was to give you a three-dimensional haircut. So you had three haircuts in one. Right. So from the front, it looks like you had a, a, a fade, okay. like a nice fade. From the side, it looked like a mohawk. And from the back, just almost looked like a regular haircut because at the back, you just round it off. And like you said, you do a sunburst. So it was, okay. it was three-dimensional haircut. That's deep. Mm. That's deep. Yeah. So do that cost more? If you want all that going on in one haircut? I mean, it, it, it takes With me, longer. yeah. <laughs> With me, yeah. It is that. It yeah. takes you longer. It's, okay. It takes you longer. Yeah. yeah. All right. 40 and up. <laughs> there we go. Let's talk about them prices. Yeah, though. 40 and up. <laughs> Why we go up at 40. <laughs> so what about a buzz cut? Um, what it, was that? That was, um, again, military. Um, a lot of the uh, military guys would get a buzz cut where, and again, it's, terminology okay so working when i was at i worked out in odenton near fort Meade. you know the guys that come in white guys that were in the navy or marine say hey i want a uh, a skin type buzz cut and that's basically a fade buzzing at the top and they like that to stick up a little and some of them try to do a flat top so you get the flat to flat top comb and give it that that look so it's just different like do clients still come in and say, um, give me a regular? Yeah. Yeah, we get regulars all the time. Yeah, yeah. I love so regular. So do you determine the love regular of the regular uh, with the guard? Or is just a regular is just stationary guard? You use like one? Or it's depending on what length they Okay. Mm-hmm. So whatever their hand length is, you'll just ask them, do they want to go down? You know, like you show them in the mirror because you can't, everyone says one. <laughs> yeah. Right. But everyone doesn't want a one. Okay. Like to take me down to a two or something. But you're already at a one. I can't do that. Right. You know, so it's, you definitely have to break it down. That's when that customer service comes in. Just being able to satisfy the customer, but also doing it the right way that barbers do it. Yeah. And it's just okay. the same length all the way around. Make it brush limp. Keep it dark, breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep it dark. Yeah. Right. Keep it dark, yeah. brush limp. That means don't go under the one or... Right. Okay, mm-hmm. so some, two and up. If you say keep it don't want to see them wrinkles in the head. You know, okay, them the high dogs like in the back. Like a, a, <laughs> it might look like a sharpe okay. with the with the with the meat. Yeah, you know, the creases. They don't want to see that. So nothing under a two, right? To prevent that look. It it depends on your texture, and all that stuff. So is the crew cut the same as a buzz cut or like crew cut again? That's you talking the different ethnic group okay want a crew cut so african americans can't get crew cut if they want it they can okay. get it but that's not something that's not our okay. terminology that's not right. when you go to a local barbershop you go to the average black barbershop you say i'm walking i want a crew cut then i'm like well. <laughs> right. yeah you gotta be out yeah, there and, you gotta be out there and you gotta have a whole bunch of friends from cockiesville and all that you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
you have walk-ins uh -huh. and clientele that are of other ethnic backgrounds. Yeah. Um, straight hair, thick hair, um, not so straight hair. Like okay. all demographics come into the Elysium. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there. And we can help each and every one of you. Yeah. Yes. All ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. So what's the story about like going against the grain or with the grain? How does that affect the haircut? Like Go ahead, Q. You look you you <laughs> deep with that. <laughs> well, that determine um going against the grain, that's pretty it's getting everything even. Okay. Everything everything will become even. And then you wanna go back with the grain and smooth it out. You know, to lay it back down. Okay. Make it nice and smooth. You know, no hair sticking up. You can go with some, you know, uh, with the uh, shears afterwards. Mm -hmm. But just going with the grain is to lay it down. Yeah. Okay. Going against the grain is to get it all even. Mm -hmm. Nice okay. clean look. But with the waves. Go with yeah. the waves. Please. See, that's what I was about to ask. Right. Please. That's what I was so about to ask. Carefully with the waves. Right. With the you waves. You brush, you cut, you brush, you cut. Mm -hmm. And you have all different types. Like some people have waves that just come to the front. They have the 360. Mm -hmm. or they have some that just doesn't come in at all. You just got to be very careful. You will get both spots. Mm -hmm. and, and the waves. And so they would have to start all over with their waves or just wait till Yeah, if they, they fake. Yeah. <laughs> if they fake. If they got them fake waves, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Fake waves. Waves. The fake Explain. waves is the ones that's, that's, they, you, they, they put the cat, they got the, uh, the wave you. cap on, <laughs> and they got the bunch of gel on it, and it's not trained yet. Okay. You know, they they, they may be like two weeks in, three weeks in, a month in, mm -hmm. and then you brush it one time, that joint straighten back out. Uh huh. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or you wash your hair, and, and, and it's gone. You're like, where are you washing You had them fake waves in your head. You know, you gotta. <laughs> No, but I'm right, right? Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So this must be a topic that's inside yeah, the barbershop, yeah, the fake waves. Okay. You know, they don't want you to mess their waves up, but if they fake, they're not going to let it now. Okay. You got the real waves where they've trained it, they've taken the time. Watched you know, it, took care of it. Yeah. Right. You can, you can do whatever you want with it, the wave's still going to be there. Yeah. How long usually does it take, or just depending on the texture? Depends on your texture, how you okay. take care of your hair. Right. Depends on your texture. Yeah. Gee, a, a, just a what is bout. the procedure? Yeah. I, you, you gotta know. work. You gotta work hard. For you gotta work. Yeah, okay. I want to say that. Yeah. The real yeah. course. Yeah. You gotta work it, at the course here. Okay. Like, Better to start young. You can't be putting. Don't come into the barber shop with a bunch of Murrays in your head. You yeah. And, that's wax. Yeah. It's not grease. And coming okay. in. Yeah. Don't do that. So to achieve the waves, you have to what? Uh, brush it, tie it down. Wash it, wash it, wash it regularly. It, yeah. yeah, I got it. I got it. If you if you follow my steps, what's your I steps? guarantee you success. <laughs> Tell they me, gotta come see you. Just come get see, the steps. Come what's see, the steps? Come, come see, come see. Shan Q shop for the steps, baby. Yes, I can get you right. <laughs> nah, but for real, the uh, be swimming. Just the steps for waves are okay. You gotta you gotta at least you gotta you gotta grow your hair. Okay. Right. You gotta use. You know, it's a regular, right? Right. So that's so, like a regular. Or, or, okay. temp, or, temp, or a temp, temple tape. You can start with, the, with a low blend here, you know, and back here. Okay. You don't have, I mean, you can start with a regular. Okay. Now, I, I always I always believe that the temp is best when it comes to waves. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a lot of people, they tie their wave cap way too tight if they okay. grow mm -hmm. even. And then the hair starts to break around this part where you squ okay. with a, uh, with a, um, mm -hmm. the wave cap where, you, where it squeezes after a while if they wear it too much and way too tight but yeah. if you temp it it's, it's already low and it's not going to do that but if you grow it out it can it has breakage but it takes about approximately let's just say you regular your re a regular decent hair um, I would say about 90 days okay you want to just let it grow let it grow and you want to get it to be a two, a two with the grain or a little bit better, maybe a three, depending on your texture of hair. And you want to brush it a hundred times this way. What? Okay. A hundred times this way. A hundred times this you way. Brush ninja. And a hundred times, and you got to brush. I mean, you got to brush. Keep you got to put in work. I'm talking about all day, every up, day. Pretty much all day to check on it. Okay. To check on it. For yeah. Baby. Like, you got at least, at least, at least, at least four to six times a day. 
But you also have different types of brushes, right? That You're you right. You need, you need a, okay. a firm one. And the type so, you want. Yeah, boy. You want the yeah. you have to have a different type of brush. Right. You gotta use. You wow. can't just use a hard brush. You gotta use a soft brush. <laughs> I the, know. And that's where the that's where the trick come in. You because you want to use one hard, and one soft. So you want to go one hard, one soft, one hard, one soft, and just keep going. Then you want to roll it. And you want to roll it. And then in the you want to roll. <laughs> roll it. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you won't get tired, but you just keep rolling with it, and it's going to come up. You want to use two brushes. The easiest way you better have okay. some Indian in your family. <laughs> Deep. Right. You, wanna, you know when you when you, when you, when you step out when you step out the shower, that's when you want to put the Marys in. We're well, not Marys. But you want to uh, go back. But you want to make sure that your hair is still damp. It's, it's soft. Okay. Still damp that's, soft. that's the key. It's got to be the soft. Best time. It's the best time is when you when you get out the shower, you wet it a little bit, and put your whatever you like in it. Um, I prefer. I think a good. Good uh, greases, the one Tavon sells. Shout out to Tavon. What up, boy? Um, Tavon? He couldn't be here today. He's okay. over at the jails uh, doing the kids. Okay. Um, hair, excellent. Haircuts. Haircuts. Doing yep. the kids' haircuts. Right. Excellent. Wow. Giving back. <laughs> yeah, doing the <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He cuts, oh, he, yeah, he cuts the juveniles out at uh, Hickey. Good. Um, but, yeah, he, uh, I mean... What is that called? Oh, it's on the phone. Yeah. I forgot. It'll come to me. But okay. you want to put that in there. You can like come back to the shop. Tell you on sales. It's a very, very good. It's an organic yeah, grease. Okay. It's another thing. You want to stay away from all these greases. They have a lot of metals in them and chemicals in them because it will knock your waves out in the long term. It'll give you bald. You'll go bald and thinning. And yeah. A lot of that stuff that you don't want in your hair. Okay. Yeah, you don't want mineral. Because a lot of the greases have mineral oils oh, in yeah. them. So you don't want that. Right, but you want to put it in and just start brushing, you know, a hundred times each way. Then hurry up and put the cap on within a couple seconds. And lay it down. And you want to put another one on top of that. Good. And lay that down. And then just leave it alone. That's commitment. Excellent. Yes. That's probably the most commitment. <laughs> yes. Have. Well, probably, that's the why way. they get upset when, like, the barber go against their mm-hmm. grain or mess their oh, waves yeah. up. Because yeah. it's a lot of work to put in. Yes. Right, and them, good, those ways right there are guaranteed, I promise you. Good. 100%. 100%. Yes. 100%, ask any, 100% guaranteed. Ask any brother locked up, yes. incarcerated, they'll tell you. <laughs> All right. So, real quick, um, describe the atmosphere on a typical day at the barbershop. Our atmosphere is wonderful. I'll, I'll touch on that. Like, we had fun, we joke, we, we always provide hygiene, you know, service um it's very family oriented children are okay in there mm-hmm. you know the language is limited the what's on tv is limited the radio station is limited um we have a salon in the back as well okay so Good. Men and women children come in and out all day long um and i, I mean the atmosphere is positive vibes positive, um, positive yeah. vibes um we need that good energy, and that's mm-hmm. what's in the shop every day. Yeah. Okay. And professional. We got. I, I really admire where we're at because we have a good team, and that's very very important. good team. Yes. Very. I appreciate everybody. Yeah, that's very important to have a really because customers can see when barbers or coworkers are not vibing together. Right. right? Or I'm being cutthroat. I'm being vindictive right. towards my my buddy. You yeah. know, we right. all we all trying to feed our family, so mm-hmm. that's very important. Yeah. So we have a really good team that the, the customers see that we get along. So yeah. that's important. Yeah. And I love referring. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and the reason why I prefer uh, to Marquise and Breezy um, because I got a lot of I got a big chip on my shoulder with that because the first first barbershop I went to on Pimp, uh, on Park Heights. Dude had he would have like seven, eight, nine. He dropping names. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't said the barbershop. Right, right, right. You just said the location. Yeah, just, just, just on Park location. Heights. He didn't but, remember. Like this, this, this is a big no to me. You know, you got seven, eight, nine people lined up. At least refer say, hey, check my man out. Check Breezy out. Check, you know. And you just sitting there. You know, yeah. and, I, and, and, yeah. and, and I always try to give back. I, I don't want nobody else going through that. Right. So I always refer. Hey, check that. Man, why are you trying to toss me? I'm not trying to toss you on nobody else. But... I know how, how it was yes. and I hated it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I got a big chip on my shoulder for barbers who don't do that. Yeah. You can't cut everybody. Mm-hmm. It's right. impossible. You can't. And then when you got people waiting, when you got eight, nine, ten people waiting on you, 
somebody's not going to get quality. Mm-hmm. Yes. Somebody's going to get. You go, now it starts to turn into quantity. You got to hurry and get these people out of here. Yep. You know, so I'm always looking for quality over quantity. Hey, check them out. I don't want nine, 10, 15 people waiting on me. You know, so hey, hey, here you go. They can, they can, they can knock you out. They're gonna take care of you. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that's the culture in a in. I can say Baltimore. One of my friends, he said he has to get to the barbershop at 5:30 in the morning just for his 8:30 appointment. Wow. Because when he pull up, it's people already sitting in their cars waiting at 5:30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. For what? 8:30 barbershop. Nah. I've heard those stories with yeah. Shannon and yeah. Tamo. Like it actually takes place. Um, but when he was going back to helping and having a chip on his shoulder about that, like I'm very grateful for Shannon for him sending people over like Chuck Breezy out mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. again I'm a woman in a male dominated industry and for him to support me like that gives people courage to sit in my chair, which I'm very, very grateful for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and he definitely refers all the time. People call in, prefer like Breezy here, Mark Marquise is here. Like he will constantly do it. It's just not once in the blue moon, it is constant. Yeah. Good. And I've been in places where barbers would stand outside at the door. They wouldn't even inspect the rotation. You know, mm-hmm. like if a walk can come in, they'd just stand at the door. And then they right. even try to undercut you and be like, nah, uh, I'll get you shorter for 15. But wow. you're not yeah. 25. Yeah. You know wow. what I'm saying? So it just, it's, it's not, that's not good. I yeah. that early on. Yeah. And, it, and you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good vibe. Right. Right. It yeah. was, it was unfortunate because, again, being a woman, and then again, not knowing the cutthroat of the industry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm a virgin to it. So what I'm seeing now is, is, is great so my perception of the barbershop is a good one Mm -hmm. um it's not like um any stories like that would hinder me from growing and blossoming good yeah if i i mean i didn't see it but if i if i do catch somebody doing that in our shop Mm -hmm. you probably i probably you know talk to you for you know once or twice but if you keep doing it no I like a fair, yeah. even, and we help each other. I like a team environment. Everybody, mm-hmm. everybody yeah, passing each other. Good. Everybody referring each other. Yeah, everybody referring good. to each other. Yeah. You know, even and, and and I'm I'm also humble enough to know that I'm not good at every cut. I have my lane. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I know if Breezy, I, I saw some of her her, uh, her her artwork as far as her designs. Some of that stuff I can't do. Yeah. So I refer, I refer her, or it might be some clients that come in. They, I can't, I can't do them where I have to use shears. I'm gonna refer them to Marquise. Marquise is the man. Yeah. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Because I, I have my lane, and mm-hmm. I want, I'm good with my lane. I'm excellent with my lane. Mm-hmm. You know, but once I got, once I, you know, I'm not afraid to step over. If I have time, I will. Mm-hmm. But if I don't have time to really think about it, I mean, go through, I'll, I'll just refer. Which I'm, I don't have no problem. Right. I'm humble right. enough. Yeah, that benefits the barber and the client as well. Yeah, yeah. So. it does. And it the really shop does. atmosphere because they're gonna say this is what happened. This is my experience. The best mm-hmm. type of advertisement is word of mouth, mm-hmm. and that still stands to this day. Um, and we definitely believe in again good customer service, yeah. solid customer service. That was my next question at X. Like, how important is customer service Very to important. your business? Extremely. That's important. definitely probably That's your in the name. top five. Yeah. That's your okay. Name, you know. Aside from yeah. cleanliness, it's up in the top five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the reason why customer service is one of the most important definitely in the top five um it broke it breaks down like this okay a lot of older barbers in their 60s and 70s a lot of them can't see mm. and they don't have the they don't have the, the, the right the man they lost some motion in their wrist they might be a little bit off balance but the reason why that person keeps going to them is because of the service mm-hmm because of the service he, he, he hardly can't see mm-hmm. yeah. so why do you keep going back to him you said the reason why you keep because he likes the way he treats them yeah. that's it that's and exactly. how he makes and mm-hmm. when the way the way you treat them is how you make them feel mm-hmm. and then and then that connection and that bond mm-hmm. yeah. you know that's that's the reason why so if anybody want to know how important the customer service is that's how important yeah brother, brother he can't even can't even see mm-hmm. but yet 
He likes the way you make him yeah. feel. Even with children, I um, had one this adorable little boy. He came in crying, mm -hmm. and his mom was holding him. And once he sat in my chair, and I'm more uh -huh. patient with the little kids. Like I had like a, a that's different great. Patience. That's mm -hmm. so great. I'm grateful for that too. Um, but now he's a continuous customer. He has no problem. When he comes in. He's like, Mom, I'm getting my hair cut. So he's excited. Um, and they don't have any fear of it. I know a lot of experiences with moms bringing their sons to the barbershop, their last barber like cut them, the, the shears, I mean the um, edges were too sharp. And you get traumatized from stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or the alcohol burns or any mm -hmm. little thing to frighten a child from or misbehaving within the chair. Um, it is, it's not good. Um, I know a lot of parents may want their two-year-old to get a fade. If you know that your two-year-old can't sit still, don't do it. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. That's right. Do a regular, do, mm -hmm. do a temp. Okay, good, yeah. You know, you don't want to break that child's patience. And then again, mm -hmm. they're going to have a, a negative stigma against the barber shop. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say uh, one of the things about customer service that I really appreciate um, is one time I went and worked at Hair Cuttery. And the thing I liked about Hair Cuttery um, they offered a lot of free classes and one of the things that I took away from the class was they had a concept on customer service okay. um, which I try to implement which really helps because it makes the it makes the person feel uh, like they're they're getting a service they feel welcome they feel mm -hmm. appreciated they're not just a dollar sign so I try to implement that and a lot of times I've gotten a lot of returning clients from that and then I had a good mentor that said one thing that you would, would that would never change is your service. If you you can be the, I don't want to say the worst, but you may not be the best. Mm. But if you have the good, great custom service, you're always going to have people coming. That's right. You're always going to have people coming. Good, mm -hmm. yeah. excellent. So, do you all mostly do regular clients or like walk-ins? We probably. So I, I take all walk-ins, okay. Marquis and myself. We also have clients that have okay. appointments, but we are always willing to help. If we're not there, Shannon may be able to squeeze you in a table, mm -hmm. may be able to squeeze in a walk-in, mm -hmm. but even if they can't, they still, at that point, referring us mm -hmm. um, and letting them know when we'll be in, what time we'll be in, giving mm -hmm. them a card, contact information. Our contact information is in the shop. On okay. The mirror, as far as like uh, Instagram name, Facebook name, my phone numbers. Mm -hmm. so That's easy good. Access when people yeah. walk in, yeah, because you can see our work right then and there to see whether or not you want to sit in that chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, at times it can be pressure, but I think all we're all confident in what we do, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's really not as bad as it as it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for barbers that's in the business, you think they should have social media? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, we're not I, using the books anymore. Right. Yeah, so. yeah, Shannon. That's one thing he told me I needed to start doing. Like, I'm, I'm a little old school still. You know, I don't, I don't take pictures all the time. Mm -hmm. I see Shannon reads. Everybody's taking pictures. I don't. I'm trying to get myself into that ring just to start taking pictures uh -huh. so I can post my work. Cause now this generation is the millennials are all on Instagram. Everybody's on their phone, so you have to change with the time. That's true. Yeah. Uh, um. Well, go ahead. Um, I would just say, like, yes, um, social media is a good outlet for followers, but don't fool people. Don't oh, look at that, man. Movie, that Photoshop. Um, all the paint, you know, the the enhancements need to to look natural. Okay. You see, a lot of enhancements don't look really natural. When you go to that shop, and they're not all they're cracked up to be. So then you get a disappointed client, a potential client, but a disappointed customer. Because your your photo said one thing, but you didn't do that for them. So I would say, like, if you're gonna do an honest Instagram, um, yes, you can have your your high tech cameras, but it's still real. Like his Nokia or something. Like whatever yeah. his professional camera yeah. is, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's still that's how it looks in the person. Shop. Okay, yeah. you know that's yeah. in person. Yeah. 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 His work, I just like Shannon's work, Tavon's work. Everybody's work really looks good. On camera, off camera, it's not. We're it's not. We're not crop. Right? No we're not crop in. We're not. You know, adding this. You yeah. know, we'll we'll probably bring some enhancement to the picture, just the, the quality of it. But as far as our work, it's really authentic. I really. Right. Yeah, it's really authentic. I don't mess with the photos. I'm. I'm that's where the computer savvy in me 
you know, is very low. Okay. <laughs> so all my photos that you see, it's that's what, what it is. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to do all that up the other that other stuff. But I'm real big on, you know, trying to make it look exactly like you're gonna get. I don't, I don't. I'm, the, the enhancements. Well, people have spoke against me on it. A lot of barbers they went against me on that. Some even unfollowed me. But I'm. My take on enhancements are, I, I like enhancements, I use enhancements, mm -hmm. but I don't think you should use enhancement for the lack of skill set. Okay. That's, that's a good, that's a good. Yes. If, if, yeah. if, if your fade is not that good or where you really want it to be. Yeah. So you start spraying. You know, and doing this and doing that and darkening this and darkening that mm -hmm. because you didn't have the skill set. Well, now you 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 lying to the client you, and you put it on Facebook mm -hmm. just for a like. Mm -hmm. And if somebody really wants their haircut and then they get it, and you, they sit in your chair and like oh, that's not what right. you are not gonna be able to achieve it. Right. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm saying. Like, just keep it a hundred. Yeah. You know, work put, on your craft. Work on your craft. That's that's that's. It took me to feel comfortable with fades. I mean, and I've been cutting for a while, but it took me three three years. And I, when I say comfortable, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm grinding. I, yeah. I went to the homeless shelter. If I didn't cut, I went to the homeless shelter to practice. I went to the homeless shelter to give out free cuts so I can get my reps in. Yeah. I mean, whatever I need to do to, to do to get, to get good. I mean, I, I'll watch, I'll mm -hmm. study whatever I need to do. So you have to get that in before you touch any enhancements. I really say, work on your art first. Work work on the basics. Yep. Work on the basic. Perfect that basic. And it's 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 a never and this you, you never stop learning. Once you once you give up, that's once it. you feel once you think you got it and that's it, that's when you're gonna start to decrease. Yep. Yep. And go to the how I got where I am, uh, the level I'm on. I kept going to show. I kept going to shows and classes. Oh, yes. Good. And the shows yes. and the classes, and not not so much. Well, yeah, the shows, but definitely the classes. Mm -hmm. The classes, yeah. That's where you invest in yourself, and that's like Bible study. Yeah. Because yeah. you really get in. They really teach you. It's a, you know h how to really get into it, and you can actually get up on the person while they're doing the demonstration. You know, if you go to see. a show and they're up on stage, you really can't see. Yeah. Right. But and it's a lot of distractions. But in the classes is where you go. Go to the classes, invest in yourself. I promise you, you will get it back in the long run. Yeah. Good. Don't be I scared do to invest in yourself. Yeah. That, that piece is the key. That's the like, key. Going I, to the shows. I I didn't even look at the stage. I was like, when I go to the IBS or the Bonham Brothers, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I'm look. The first thing I'm looking at, okay, cutting 101. Right. Ivan Zoot. I'm there, I'm and there. I'm there on the front row. I'm front yeah. row. On the front. I'm not sitting in the back. I'm on the front row. I got right. my pen and paper. Right. I'm asking questions. I'm up on them looking. I'm doing all that. Right. To get to get where I want to be. Right. And you can't be scared to invest in yourself. Right. And don't feel like you just if you can do a, a sharp crispy hair hairline and you think you arrived, you haven't. You you you're haven't. constantly learning. You are. You definitely. You always want to perfect something too because. One day you may be on point with something, and next you say, "No, I can really do better with that." Yeah. Um, with me right now, like I set goals weekly. Like Breezy, use don't go to the easy clipper. Go to the heavier clipper. Um, try a new clipper. Or Breezy, use these edges and or mm -hmm. um, work on the shears more. Like mm -hmm. I really That's challenge right. myself and yeah. set That's goals. That's excellent. Basis. That's great. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's definitely important because you never want to be stagnated because you always want to excel. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. So, what services do you all offer at your barber shop? That's, you know, new coming services that you didn't offer back. When, I know you've been cutting for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. what are the difference in the service changes? I know, like back in the day, you go in a barber shop, they offer about five things. Now it's a long list of items you can get: facial, nail care, massages. You go? Um. One thing I noticed uh, the other day, we had a guy who was, we told him, you know, go get your hair shampoo. And he was like, looking at us like, are y'all oh, yeah. for real? I was like, yeah, go get your hair shampoo. And he was really hesitant. I'm like, no, go get your hair shampoo. He says, when y'all start doing that? We do that. That's, that's, that's part of it. You know, yeah, that's part of the service. Um, um, the thing I like 
you know, the, the, the hot towel shave, of course, that's something traditional, but we have, I picked that up from Shannon and Tavon and even Breeze, the little tricks that we use as far as with a hot towel, hot steam, excuse me, the hot steam machine that we use mm -hmm. for the face on the hairline, uh, to soften the beard, to pull the oils out the skin, to give the haircut a really nice, authentic, clean look. So that's, that's a, okay, that's back up service. for me. Go ahead. So the hot towel does what? Hot First. towel, if you're gonna do a shave, go ahead. You, you go ahead. Oh, the hot towel, if you're gonna do a shave, the hot towel softens the, the, the beard. Um, it, so, it softens the skin as well. It's getting, it loosens everything to get ready to prep, prep for the beard to be shaved. Right. So it's um, easy. That's yeah. with a razor. Yeah, with the okay. razor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, also, what we do, um, I like too, because some men come in with the, you know, they might have been working all day. So they got sweat, they got oil in their beard. So Pork like grease. To, yeah. We want <laughs> to. Yeah, <laughs> chicken grease or chicken whatever. Grease. Yeah, they, we want to get all that stuff and clean Road it. Roadkill. So, yeah, it gets, it gets everything ready and prepared. If your canvas is not right, the haircut is not going to come out right. And oh, that's right. one thing I've learned, especially with clean hair. Is the best hair to cut. It does. And I mean, it definitely makes a difference yeah. because, as Shannon was teaching me, like the hair goes where you want it to go. So right. when you're tapering and you're fading in their hair, everybody's hair goes in a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, so you are going within that direction, you're brushing it, but washing it is so much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much better. It's just easily for us to maintain and manage that haircut and to keep our um, clippers Tools, clean. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right. Yes, and sanitary. So the client was really all surprised. I my hair wash. Yeah, you do. The client right was really there, surprised brother. when you told him, like, <laughs> it's free. It comes with the service. Yeah. yeah. They're not yeah. used to yeah. that. They're yeah. not used to it. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't. Not at where you all. No. Okay, no. not at No, we don't the, charge you that. Good. Because it, it actually makes, you, it, it makes the barber's job a lot easier mm -hmm. for you to wash and for to clean the canvas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it makes the hair erect, straight, clean. You know, and I, I like to start off damp. That way okay. I can brush it and learn the pattern. I don't really like to start off with clean, dry hair. Because it'll, it'll, like noodles, it, it, you only want to, after a while, they'll dry by itself. You don't have to dry it all the yeah. way. But, so I can lay it down. I can do what I need to do with it. And by the time I finish with it, it will be dry. Yeah. See, that's a good tip. Because in hair school, they teach you to dry the hair completely because you're using electronic, you know, I'm, the clippers, which is electric, and right. on the hair. Like some clippers you can cut wet. It's right. Oh, okay. Right, right. It's right. like based on that motor and, right. and that's magnetic, something that you definitely yeah. learn. Magnetic, mm -hmm. if you're using a magnetic motor, do not use wet hair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Use the rotary or pivot, pivot. when yep. the uh, hair is still damp or wet. Yeah. Okay. Or shears. Yeah. Shears. Learn it so oh, yeah. much. Especially if you're using shears. Um, one lesson, especially on straight hair, if you if the hair is wet mm -hmm. and you start using shears, you got to continue it wet. Okay. You can't just start it wet and then let it dry out and then start cutting because it's totally different. It's drawing it's drawing going back into its natural state. It's not, um, you know, it's it's. You know, water gives that moisture anyway. It has the, the, the cuticle swell with water, you know. Your, your cosmetology, you know. So, <laughs> so when I'm cutting the hair, I'm cutting it wet, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I keep it wet. And then once I finish my cut, then I blow dry it to make sure everything looks in cross checks mm -hmm. and stuff. So the average hair cut in the barber shops now are going up. Yes. Yes, let's talk as about it. Yes. As professionals. Yes. As professionals. Why... Is the price increasing? Because my gas, BG and E, uh, groceries, Bla <laughs> uh, blades, blades, barber equipment. People don't. When I tell people how much enhancements, yeah, all that stuff. That costs. stuff ain't cheap. Yeah, to to get a pair of clippers, those uh, new Andy outliners, those two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. Off the top, they, they ain't give you no break. Right. And so, again, you pay for yeah. the service. You pay yeah. for the service. You're paying for that, that that conversation. You're paying for that nice haircut. You're paying for that look that Marquis said you're going to feel good about. You're paying for that safe yeah. Yeah. You're paying for that safe environment. Exactly. Yes. You really are. And yes. that, that positive vibe, that's right. what you are paying for. You're paying for that free Wi Fi. And when yeah. people do invest in themselves, it comes back to them. Um, okay. When you take those places and the clients see that you've improved it, mm. they don't mind paying. You're, pay pay you're paying yeah. for that 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 licensed barber. Yes, that has invested in who's a professional. Mm -hmm. 
took those classes and spent thousands and thousands of dollars for the education so they can diagnose a situation or a, a issue that they see in your scalp and right. point you in the right direction there you go. those things you're paying for you know right that that that's included so when i when i can look and see oh my goodness your son has a wing worm right you need to take him to the doctor right right if i didn't go to school get my license Invest in it. I can't even tell you what a wing one. I'd be like, oh man, that's just dry scalp. Yeah. Right. And, and continue and get paid. And yeah. It's a problem. You, yep. You're paying for that. If uh, you, you you get a shave and the the the, the, the barber nicks you with uh, uh with the blade, and he knows how to properly clean it and seal it without you keep bleeding. Okay. You know, versus a guy who's never been to school or doesn't know how or doesn't have the that doesn't know how to stop the bleeding. Yeah. You know, that's what you're paying for though. Yes. So that right there, you you know, who wants to keep bleeding? So you pay the couple extra dollars for, for stuff like that. So is it a price difference? Because the razor is trending now. Even I see barbers even putting a razor on kids. Mm -hmm. Long time ago, barbers wouldn't use razor on kids. I guess it depends it depends on your on level. Yeah. Okay. And that child. Yeah. If the child is moving in the chair, you, you would probably, as a smart, educated barber, won't attempt to use that razor. Mm -hmm. Does that cost more? Not, Instead not, of not for us. Not, okay. yeah, not really. I just, not really. I mean, it's, to me, I think when I look at using a razor, that's, that's part of my craft. That's, okay. right. that's what I've been trained to do. I don't think, you know, what people look at is it's, just, it's an extra step. It's, right. it's an extra upcharge. You want now my 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 clippers can give you a crispy airline, mm -hmm. but I can give you a, a even crispier one with a razor. And it's gonna last longer with the razor. Yeah. Okay, that's my next question. Yeah. Okay, so what does the steam machine do? Is it the same thing as the 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 hot towel or is something else? What does the steam machine do when you? I see that's now on Instagram they blowing steam in, mm -hmm. in the client's face. Mm -hmm. Again, remember what steam it opens up the pores so okay. it's the, those oils it helps stimulate those oils as well as the natural oils in your in your skin so if i'm going to do a shave sometimes i can use a pre-shave oil mm -hmm. but we want those natural oils to bring that out also when we put it on the hairline we're bringing those oils out but we we're also going to get ready to clean it while mm -hmm. to wipe that excess oil so when we give you that when people look at that ash line that you sometimes you see mm -hmm. yeah that creates that ash line because the skin is totally clean right it's completely clean free of oil it's oil free in your hair all that's done so when i get ready i don't have to use spritz I don't have to I use, what I was about to say. I thought uh, that was holding and spray with that white line, but no. Not necessarily. No. Okay. Not necessarily. It's, it's when, when the skin is free of all the oil. And you and can clean. lay it. Yeah. With the stain, you can also lay you know, You're laying the hair down. Uh -huh. without, Like he said, without using any chemicals, put any chemicals. I like to be just natural. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get home and do what you want to do with it, it's cool. But I like it to be natural. Why? Because it's going to last longer. Without all that stuff, without putting all the, the spritz in it and all this other stuff, I do stuff where your haircut's going to last. Mm. I promise you, nine times out of ten, if I cut your hair, you're going to think next week you need a haircut. When you get back in my chair and I put the brush on and I start brushing and I say, look, you didn't even need a haircut. You needed a brush. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's a, re it's, it's a reason why I do what I do. It's a matter, I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to give away the secret. Yeah, you know, I come see I, you. I, I guarantee you, my haircuts or my shape ups are going to last longer mm -hmm. than what the guy who does not take the steps. That we, yeah. Yeah, the, or the, 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 the steps that we take, the haircut's going to last longer. I guarantee it. Yeah. Okay. It's a brand name. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> so is hair color trending in the barbershops now? You said hair color? Yeah, hair color. Mm -hmm. Barbers yeah. are now coloring hair. Yeah, yeah coloring mm -hmm. hair, yeah. coloring beards. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Lightning, yeah. yeah, lightning, um, all that. Mm -hmm. It's it, definitely a service that we provide. It's yeah. definitely big in Atlanta and Philly and yeah. Jersey. It's definitely big. Yeah. I think I saw on your page you had a gun, the airbrush gun. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my best friend. That's, that's what, yeah. So, does that help with the shape up or no? no? What does the you add in color to the hair or what? Yes, it's an it's an enhancement. Um, and it basically I'm making the shape up pop. Okay. Yeah. So when you you know when you go and you just everyday use or you know it's definitely gonna pop when you take a picture. So if you go into a wedding and you know you taking your wedding pictures, 
It's going to pop. Yeah. You're like, damn, look at my shape. <laughs> So that's when you hold the board up against the hairline yeah, yeah, and spray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll make Use that. it on the face, face you head too, yes, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes. Good. Okay. Sometimes. All right. Good, you good, know. good, good. So what about designs? Designs. We I do designs. Um, I don't. I'm not putting no Mona Lisa in your head, but I can. Yeah. I can give you a design. I can freestyle. Um, those those calls. Right. And it depends on if you know. Yeah. I like scribbles. What? Scribbles. What's that? <laughs> like, just scribble on a piece of paper and then put it in somebody's head. See, that's yeah. what they call scribble. Okay. Uh, scribble parts. So yeah. that's some more terminology. Right. When they come ex with designs. Right. It's just such a thing called scribble parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that me and Marquis had a um, conversation about how he would prefer to see something uh -huh. kind of got him, but I prefer to go freehand and just think of something. I really uh -huh. don't want to see what you want because. People have different levels and you stay in different lanes. Yeah. So if you come with the Mona Lisa as a picture, I'm, I'm not going to do that for you. It's not going to happen. But I can definitely give you a nice design. Mm -hmm. Free hand. I like awesome. zigzags and scribbles. Zigzags and scribbles. Yeah. I'm going to look that up. So, what kind of advice do you give your clients to maintain their hair and scalp after one of your haircuts? Definitely wash it. Wash it with, I like organic. Okay. Like organic shampoo. Uh, I would say keep it oiled with organic oil, maybe like castor oil. That's good. Uh, they have a lot of good things on the market that's pretty good. Um, well, I was going to say one of the things I tell my clients, especially those when I shave them, okay. a lot of men don't exfoliate their skin exfoliate yeah and i think that's really big especially that will help reduce the razor bumps mm -hmm. so i try to tell them especially if i see it you know here's a product that you need to use um to clear that up but i would also recommend you exfoliate use a moisturizer skin um cream for your skin um and then as shannon was saying organic i tell anybody if you can't put it in your mouth it shouldn't be going in your head that's right okay so even when i do women's hair as well so I do my daughter's hair, so everything that they use is pretty much either we make it shea butter, you know, avocado oil, things of that nature. So mm -hmm. I try to mm -hmm. stick the organic route. Yeah. I mean, I focus on hydration because mm -hmm. yeah. I personally wash my client's hair, so mm -hmm. I don't use the wonderful um, shampoo women that are there. But I feel the hair and I say, you know, I'm asking, what is your regimen? What are you doing? And a lot of people add water to their hair every day and that's drying it out. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to wash your hair twice a day right. with our type of ethnic background. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have oilier hair. So I say shampoo with hydration in it as well as I'm old fashioned. So thin old fashioned grease. I mean, I finish every cup of thin old fashioned grease, but it's mm -hmm. like hemp oil. So right, it's still right, that right. organic. Um, to finish it off because you want to keep your hair moisturized. So real quick before we go, um, how do you guys feel about the man weave or the beer extensions that's Wait a minute, circulating I took that now class. And trending? I think um, the beard extension is, is foolish. Yes. Now I do like the uh, the man weave. the man the, uh, the man the, the man unit. Yeah, I like the man unit, especially I understand, especially if you're going through cancer, mm -hmm. if you're going if you're going through an issue, um, the hair is falling out. I understand it. Okay. Um, that's where it's very beneficial. I would say the same um, for cancer, things of that nature. Um, if you have really bad alopecia, it helps boost your self-esteem. I know hair does. Um, and I don't see if women can wear weave. I don't know why, why can't men do it. Right. You know? I get that concept. However, Come as a woman, I do not want to pull off your weave. I do not want to. I mean, nah, 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 you can't grow it. That's yeah. it. You've dealt with things you couldn't grow before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> 
You can't grow it, you can't grow it. I want to thank you all for coming out thank today. You. Thank you. Tell uh, the clients how can they reach you if they want to make an appointment with you. Oh, you can reach me, Shank Hugh Sharp, on uh, styleseat.com. And that's the best way to reach me. Um, you can book yourself an appointment on yeah, styleseat.com. You can go to 21207. That's your that's the zip. Yeah, 21207. <laughs> Or Shan Q Sharp on styleseat.com or my Instagram, Shan underscore Q underscore Sharp. Again, that's Shan underscore Q underscore Sharp or Shan Q Sharp <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, my contact um, this is Breezy. Mine is Breezy, B R E E Z I dot fade, F A D E dot E M. Um, and you can call me. My cell is 443-570-6620. I do take appointments that way. I mean, I'm I'm not, you know, hopefully no crazies call me and they just want an appointment. That would be yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> but I do give out my personal number because, again, it's customer service. It is yes. personal, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, you can reach me at, um, at booksy.com, Noble Champion Men's Grooming. Um, my Dates and times are there. You can also uh, reach me on Facebook, Marquise Kendrick, or Instagram, Marquise Kendrick, and I'll be glad to service you. Or you just come to the shop. What's the address again? Four sixes. 6666 Security Boulevard. That's Woodlawn, Maryland, 21207. Suite 17B. Right next to Mattress Firm. In front of Taco Bell. Yep. We're easy to find. You'll see a orange truck. You'll see the big ass orange tundra out there. Yep. Thank you guys right. for having us. Yes, thank, thank you, you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So good. Tons.